yellow. And uh, of course, uh, so tell me one thing up in the sky that is absolutely yellow. Absolutely, the sun, of course. Everybody knows the sun is yellow. My young friend, all of seven years old, okay, drew this picture for me. Even she knows that the sun is yellow up in a blue sky. The weather network thinks that the sun is yellow sitting up in a blue sky, but I know different, okay? I know different. Here's a picture of the sun, and this is actually the sun yesterday. Okay, I didn't have time to get a picture of the sun this morning before I got here because it was still dark. Uh, but this is the sun yesterday, and of course we depict it as being yellow, absolutely. This is the sun's photosphere. This is the layer of the sun that shines on you. This is where the heat and the energy comes from. So if you could go outside and stare directly at the surface of the sun, which of course you absolutely do not want to do, if you could stare directly at the surface of the sun, this is the layer of the sun that you would see. And we always show it as yellow, but there's other layers to the sun as well. This is, oops, let's get it. This is the chromosphere, and this is the layer that sits above what you just saw, the photosphere. This is the chromosphere, and you can see how active it is, and you can see that there's like places where there's gas shooting off the edge. And when we show a picture of the chromosphere, we always show it in this red color. And above that is the corona, and the coronasphere, and we always show it in this kind of browny orange color, and you can see that there's all kinds of gas shooting off the edge of the sun, and these active spots here are places where all kinds of uh, charged particles and material are shooting out from the sun, flying out through space, and there's literally tons of material that comes shooting out from the sun all the time. And when we show this layer of the sun, we always show it in this color. But that's just so that we know which layer of the sun we're looking at. We pick those different colors, because the truth is, the sun is actually not yellow. The sun is white. It's the very definition of white light. The sun is white. But the way, when we draw a picture of the sun being yellow in the sky, in a nice blue sky, the reason the sun is yellow is because the sky is blue. All right? And uh, so we have something called Rayleigh scattering. Right? And what happens, of course, is there's all kinds of gas molecules floating all around you uh, in the sky. And as the white light from the sun passes through it, all those little gas molecules, all right, interact with the blue wavelengths of light. And it bounces, it, the blue wavelength hits one gas molecule and bounces off and hits another and bounces off and hits another and bounces off that and comes and lands in your eye. And that's Rayleigh scattering. And so what it means is that the sun shines on you, but the blue light gets bounced around before it gets to you. It bounces off that to there, and it bounces off to there, and it bounces off to there, and then it bounces down to you, which means you see blue light coming from over there, and coming from over there, and coming from over there. You see blue light coming from all over the sky, and that means the sky is blue. Okay, fine. So if you have a full spectrum of light and you take away the blue, what's the opposite of blue? What's the complementary color to blue on the, right? It's yellow, absolutely right. And that means that the sun appears yellowish. Now, what can happen then, right, is the sun gets really low in the sky. The sun gets low in the sky, you get towards sunset, and here you have all of that wonderful blue light being scattered around by Rayleigh scattering. But down near the horizon, whoops, down near the horizon, all right, there's other stuff in the sky, not just the gas that you're breathing. There's other stuff in the sky as well. There's pollutants and there's aerosol. There's dirt and dust and sand that gets kicked up off the ground. And these are bigger than molecules of gas. They're big, and so they interact with bigger wavelengths of light, all right? And red is much bigger wavelength of light than blue. So when the sun sets and it gets down near the horizon, you get all of the red being scattered around. And so it looks, uh, the sun, or the sky, looks red down there. And then something really weird happens. As the sun gets down there, if there's a whole lot of red scattering down near the horizon, and the red light from the sun is being scattered by all those particles, if we scatter the blue light, and that makes it look red, if we scatter the red light, uh, or that makes the sun look yellow, I should say, we scatter the red light, what's the complementary color to red? What color is the sun going to look if we uh, take the red light out? Green, absolutely right. And remark, has anybody ever seen the sun look green? No, you haven't. 
but remarkably, it can happen, okay? This can happen, something called, the first person to observe it was French, so it's called le rayon vert, the green flash, the green ray. And what can happen is just as the sun is setting, when all of that red light is being scattered all over the sky, there's nothing but green left. And just as the sun sets for a brief moment, just before it goes below the horizon, you get this flash of brilliant emerald green light, the green flash. And just for a moment, the sun turns this wonderful shade of green. I've seen it exactly once in my life, and it was amazing, absolutely amazing. So that can happen. 